Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Mathematics Parshala. This is a problem of CSIR NET December 2023 Mathematical Sciences. This is a problem of abstract algebra part C. The question ID is 704083. This is a problem of group theory. Uh, let us first read the question. Which of the following statements are true? So, first, uh, Option 1 says that let G1 and G2 be finite groups such that their orders, order of G1 and order of G2 are co-prime. Then any homomorphism from G1 to G2 is trivial. So first let us examine option 1. So we are given that order of G1 and order of G2 are co-prime. <coughs> that is prime to each other. So GCD order of G1 and order of g2 is 1 this is given so if we suppose f is a group homomorphism from g1 to g2 then clearly we know that f e equal to e so first take one element a not equal to e belongs to g1 then consider the order of this element f of a so we know that order of f a divides order of a for group homomorphism f <coughs> and also order of a divides order of g1 so we must have order of f a divides order of g1 also, as f a is an element of g2, so order of f a divides order of g2. But g c d g1 g2 1, so we must have order of f a is equal to 1. That means f a is the identity element in g2. So f a equal to e. So, you, so uh, we have taken one arbitrary element a belongs to g1 and we get f a equal to e. So what we get? We get f a equal to e for all a belongs to g1 so that means a is a trivial homomorphism so option 1 is the correct option <coughs> then look at option 2 for option 2 it uh, option 2 says that let g be a finite group let f such that g to g be a group homomorphism such that f fixes more than half of the elements of g then fx equal to x for all x belongs to g so g is a finite group and f is a group homomorphism from g to g and given that f fixes more than half of the element so f fixes means fx equal to x so if we consider the set subset of g such that for those elements which is fixed by f that is x belongs to g such that f fixes x such that f fixes x that is x belongs to g such that f x equal to x so it is a easy exercise to show that s is a subgroup of g we are not showing this this is a very trivial exercise that S is a subgroup of G. So, as this is subgroup of G, by Lagrange theorem, we have order of S divides order of G, divides order of G, but we are given that this order of G is greater than half, uh, more than half of the elements of G. So, it must be greater than half of this order of g so this cannot happen this cannot happen uh, unless this is equal so as this is greater than half of order of g so it can uh, it divides order of g uh, if and only if order of is equal to order of g so as this is a subset of g, we must have s equal to g. So now what we get that s equal to g means 
for all such x belongs to G if x equal to x. That is, if x equal to x for all x belongs to G. So, option 2 is the correct option. Now, look at option 3. Let G be a finite group having exactly 3 subgroups. Then G is of order P square for some prime P. So, this is also uh, easy to prove. This will also the correct option for option 3. So, G has, G is a, G, uh, G is a finite group having exactly 3 subgroups. So, this is a subgroup of G, trivial subgroup. G is a improper subgroup of G and except these two subgroups, there, there is exactly one subgroup, say H of G. So, now the question is, what is the order of this H? If this order is a composite number, say M, then also Q, there exists some prime number Q, such that Q is a prime divisor of M, Q divides M. So, also as this M divides order of G, so Q divides order of G and by Lagrange theory, there will be a subgroup say K such that order of K equal to Q. So, we have more than three subgroups of G. So, this is not possible. So, we must have this order of H is a prime number. So, it is, this cannot be a composite number. So, suppose it P. So, now we must have the order of G is a multiple of this P. So, P into something say P into say K. Then also if this K is a prime number then we have a subgroup of order K. A again we have more than three subgroups and if it is not a prime number it uh, suppose here, uh, K um, uh, for this K suppose P does not divide K. So for this uh, then we must have a prime divisor of k and then uh, which is different from p and suppose uh, it is say l l divides k such that l not equal to p then again by Cauchy's theorem we have a subgroup of order l so again we have more than three subgroups so this also cannot happen so so we must have order of g equal to that p into something cannot happen. So, this must be p to the power something. So, suppose it is p to the power say r. Now, if this r, if this r is greater than, greater than 2, then, then we have by Silo's first theorem that g has subgroups of order p, p square because r is greater than 2. So, we must have G has subgroups of P, P square. So, again we have this singleton E, G, a subgroup of order H, a subgroup of order P square. So, again we have more than three subgroups of G. So, also this case cannot happen. So, R must be less than equal to 2. R must be less than equal to 2. Now, so this R must be either 1 or 2. So, if this is R equal to 1, that is order of G equal to P, then this H, the subgroup of order uh, P, that is this H will be equal to G, then we have only two subgroups, one is E and one is G. So, this case also cannot happen. So, the only feasible case is order of G equal to P to the power 2, that is P square. So, if a group have, group has exactly three subgroups then this group must be of order p square for some prime p so this is the correct option now look at option four any finite abelian group g has at least d order of g subgroups in g where dm denotes the number of positive divisors of m so it says that if g is a subgroup of order uh, order say order say say order n and 
dn uh, dn here uh, number of number of positive divisors of n suppose is m then it says that g has at least m number of subgroups so now we know that that is the uh, that is actually the converse of lagrange theorem for finite abelian group if the group is not abelian then in general the converse of lagrange theorem does not hold but if the group is abelian finite abelian group then the converse of lagrange theorem hold that is if uh, if say k is a divisor of order of g that is n then we must have g has a subgroup of order k so we must have for each divisors of n there is a subgroup of that order that uh, divisor of order so we must have g has at least at least this m number of subgroups as there are m number of divisors of n so for all those divisors suppose these divisors are k1 k2 dot dot km so for this k1 g has a subgroup say h1 of order k1 for this k2 g has a subgroup h2 of order k2 and so on up to g has a subgroup say hm or of order km so as g is abelian group so all such divisors g has a subgroup of that divisor order so g has at least this dm d order of g subgroups so option 4 is the correct option so here option 1 2 3 4 all the correct options this is the solution of this